which is we are in section 4.3. Uh, we need to get through 4.4 four, and we're done. So this is a short unit. Expect to test sometime next week. There is a question mark. Suppose that you have x to the third times x to the fifth. What do you do to the exponents? You add them. Very good. So it's 3 plus 5 in that situation, right? And logarithms have to do with exponents. So I'm going to show you a rule right now that we get to use with logarithms. And to you, it's going to seem like magic. It does tie back to what happens here, OK? Notice how we have one base and we added the exponents, OK? So if you have the logarithm of two things that are multiplied together, that's the same thing as the log base A of A plus the log base A of B. So you could take the logarithm of a product and separate, separate it into two logarithms. That's your first important rule for the day. What do you think happens if I divide? Log base A of A minus log base A of B. So multiplication, you add, division, you subtract. So here, if you have x to the third to the fifth, notice how we multiply the exponents. Okay, you get 3 times 5 up there. So here, if you have something to a power, you can move that out front and multiply it. So C times the log base A of A. Again, I, I know it looks like we're just making stuff up, but it's really an extension of our properties of exponents. Hi. This guy right here? Yeah. Um, don't give me a letter. Give me a number. Okay. Log base two, two of. Nope. But if the A was a 2, then they would cancel out. All right. So let us go to a couple examples here. The directions say, use the laws of logarithms to rewrite the expression in a form with no logarithm of a product or a quotient or a root or a power. I currently have the logarithm of a product. I don't want it to be a product. So I can rewrite this simply as the log of. 5 plus the log of 3. You separate it into two logarithms using addition. And that's, it. that's it. No. Here we have the log of 3 plus the log of 4 squared plus the log of 5 raised to the 6th power. Uh, we're not done. Notice how I took this multiplication, this product, and I separate it into three logarithms. Now, what I have a problem. I currently have the logarithm of a power. What can I do with that too? Move it out front, and I can move the 6 out front. And so you get log of 3 plus 2 log of 4 plus 6 log of 5. You all okay? That's that. So um, I thought that it was possible you saw this in advanced algebra 2. Um, third hour led me to believe that that was not the case. Marissa remembers it? Okay. Sure. Uh, 
So just to be uh, clear, we, we've, we've got to be careful here because people start getting way out of control with it, and I'll show you the example. Suppose we have, you know, log of x to the 6. Well, you could take the 6 out and, you know, have 6 log of x. I mean, that's, that's all good. We're, we're happy. But people, they, they do stuff like this then. So, so they get like 3 squared, and they just bring the 2 out. They're like, it's 2 times 3, which is 6. And that's just, you see what I'm saying? Like, exactly. You can't do it because there's not a logarithm. So people just start doing it all the time. You know what I mean? And so we, we got to be careful in those situations. Very good. Thank you. All right. So let's move on to this one. Uh, there is a correct answer here. Does anybody want to guess whether or not we deal with the division first or whether we deal with the exponent first? So here's how you determine. Here's how you determine, okay? Suppose you have 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. You would start by subtracting 1, right? Now, by, by some of your you know, logic, you would say, well, you know, multiplication division comes first in PEMDAS, so we should divide by the 2 first. But th isn't this actually reverse order of operations? Like, think about how you solve an equation. Suppose that you plugged a number in for x. Suppose you plugged in 5. You would first multiply by 2, and then you would add 1, right? Okay, well, I, sh I should have picked four, but <laughs> um, so if I had four, you know, you take two times one, or four times two, and then you, you add one to it. So when we solve it, we do it in reverse order, don't we? We first undo the one. That's why we subtract the one. We do it in reverse order of operation. See that? So when we deal with this, we're going to do it in reverse order of operation. You first take four divided by seven, and then you cube it. So I will first deal with the exponent because that came in the last operation. So I moved the 3 out. Was it just the 4 being taken to the third power? Was it just the 7? Was it both of them? It was both. So now that you have this division piece, we're going to rewrite it using subtraction. So 3 log of 4 minus 3 log of 7. The 3 is being applied to both the 4 and the 7. Log base 3 of x squared minus 5. I'm going to rewrite it as log base 3 of x squared minus 5 raised to the 1 half power. Because the square root is the same as 1 half power. So I bring the 1 half to the front. Square root is the same as one half power. You better? Okay, now look at this. If you were to plug something in for x, you would square it and then you would subtract 5. Is there a way to undo subtraction with logarithms? I mean, if I look up at my properties up here, it says, you know, if, if you have something that's multiplied, you can separate it. If you have something that's divided, you can separate it. If you have a power, you can separate it. But can we do anything about subtraction? We can't, so it's done. That's it. All right, this one should really uh, tidy up your learning here. A uh, natural log of 2x to the fourth over x minus 2 cubed. We have lots of operations. We have 2 times. We have x to the fourth. We have divided. We have this thing cubed. Any idea which one you deal with first? The division, because in order of operation, you would plug in something for x, you would take it to the fourth and multiply by 2. You would take x minus 2, then you would cube it. And the last thing you would do is go ahead and divide those two expressions, right? Since that's the last thing you would do in order of operation, it's the first thing that we undo. So we got the natural log of 2x to the fourth minus the natural log of x minus 2 cubed. I want to deal with this thing right now because I got two operations going on there. I've got two times and I've got x to the fourth. Do you see those two operations? So which one do I do first? Do I undo the two times or do I undo the x to the fourth? Any thoughts? 
times because in order of operations, you would take something to the fourth and then you would multiply it by two. So that's what you undo. So we got natural log of two plus the natural log of x to the fourth minus the natural log of x minus two cubed. Now I am, but let's get to your point. Is the 2 being taken to the 4th, or x, or both? It's only the x that's being taken to the 4th power. If it was both, it would be 2x raised to the 4th power. So I can't move the 4 in front of the 2. Okay, you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 4 only goes in front there. So I have the natural log of 2 plus 4 natural log of x. Minus 3 natural log of x minus 2. Thank you for saying ln because everybody thought I was saying in. In is a preposition. We use it in English. I got no laughs on that one. Okay. Um, thank you. Funny looking. All right. So... Here's one thing I want you to be able to recognize is notice how the 2 and the x to the 4th, those are in the numerator, so they are positive. Whereas x minus 2 is in the denominator, so it is negative. See that? Look at this one above here. 4 is in the numerator, so it's 7 is in the denominator, so it's time for you to try one on your own, don't you think? Go. I don't like the last one. Just gets everybody confused. If I were to change the notes, I'd rewrite it and I'd use something like that. Okay, I'm going to slowly work this out so you can check. Okay, let's talk about it real quick so we can make sense of this. Yay. Notice how my last operation was squared, so I moved that out front first. Would everybody agree that the 5 and the x and the 7 and the y, they, they are all being squared? So therefore, they all have a 2 in front of them. Second of all, 7 and y are in the denominator, so therefore they should be negative. negative. The 5 and the x are in the numerator, so they should be positive. What do you think, Kaylee? Uh -huh. I'm having a hard time teaching you because, like, I see Hannah right here, and it's hard, like, Hannah is just it's hard not to laugh, okay? You look amazing. The Rudolph, the antlers, and then I, I like, move my focus, and I look, at, I look at Maddie, and Maddie's got an iron on her face. <laughs> And then I go over to Hannah to take Hannah seriously. <laughs> what? So, question. Can you just explain it all again? Yep. Are you okay with what I have there? Yes. Okay, so now look at our order of operations. We would multiply those, we'd multiply those, and then we would divide. So I'm going to undo the division. Because all of this was being squared, the 2 has to go to both parts. 2 times the natural log of 5x minus 2 natural log of 7y. Now, these are being multiplied. So I separate them using addition. Because both of them are being squared, the 2 goes with both of them. 2 natural log of 5 plus 2 natural log of x. Minus 2 natural log of 7 minus 2 natural log of y. 
Better? Yes. Flip it over. The directions are now different. They say rewrite as one logarithm, a single logarithm. Notice I have two logarithms. I will write it as the log base 2 of what? Which is? Nope. Yep. Remember, you can change. You can change. You can change logarithmic expressions uh, from addition into multiplication by using a single one. Okay, we are doing the opposite thing, kind of like how you were asked once upon a time to do x plus two times x minus one, and you got x squared plus x minus two, right? And we said, oh, and now we want you to factor that. We want you to get x plus 2 times x minus 1. Like, you're doing the opposite thing. So here, here we're taking it from one logarithm and writing it as multiples. In this situation, you have multiple logarithms and you're writing it as a single. All right, let's try one that's uh, uh, a little bit more difficult. Letter B. I'm going to rewrite it as 2 log base 5 of 3. Minus, instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to write it as 1 third log base 5 of 64. Dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. So, what would you do now? Uh, Ella? 2 is going to move up to the exponent. Cube root? Cube root? Yeah, so I'm going to have log base 5 of 3 times 2 or 3 squared? What is 3 squared? So I've got 9 minus log base 5 of, and now I've got 64. Is it times a third or, or raised to the 1 third power? And what's 64 to the 1 third power? What is the cubed root of 64? 4. All right. That looks a lot easier, but the goal is to write as a single logarithm. I still have two logarithms. So this is going to be the log base 5 of what? Of 9 fourths. No. Try letter C on your own. Try doing anything to it. Go. Try something. Do something. Do anything. Ah, oh, you're close. Okay, let's check, see where you got. I took these numbers out front, and I moved them in order to make exponents. So I had 4 squared, which is 16. I had 2 cubed, which was 8. And 2 to the 1 half is the square root of 2. We all good? Okay, so if it's subtraction, does it end up in the numerator or denominator? Uh, denominator. If it's addition, does it end up in the numerator or denominator? Numerator. numerator. So I have the natural log of, in the numerator, I should have 16 roots of 2. And in the denominator, I should have 8. Kenzie? Okay. Because it's positive, it will be in the numerator. And, Mackenzie, if I could, if I could just, if I could say this really quick. Addition is commutative. You can move it around, right? So if I... If I move this round, you could write as natural log of 16 plus the natural log of the root of 2 minus the natural log of 8. So if I would have written it like that, you all would have put the root of 2 in the numerator, right? You got the right answer? Yeah. Well, then you should be fine. You got the natural log of 2 roots of 2? Yeah. Okay. Well, Maddie, Kaylee, Maddie. Yes. 
But in the end, just to be clear, it's one natural log, not three of them. Make sure those are the numerator and that's the denominator. Kaylee? Can we simplify one that and get the natural log? Yeah. Two roots of two, you're done. Right. Yep. Nat no, natural log of two roots of two is your answer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's do D. You give me guidance. What do you want to do first? Mackenzie, I like your idea. Can you be more specific? Correct three. You, you want to put the three through? Yeah. Okay, good idea. So we got three natural log of x plus one plus three natural log of x plus two minus six natural log of y. So I think Mackenzie said, hey, there's three out front. That's going to end up being an exponent. In order to deal with it, let's, let's distribute through. Good idea. So what do you want to do now? So you want to move this up to an exponent now, yeah. and this up to an exponent now, and this up to an exponent. Three. So you've got the natural log of x plus 1 cubed plus the natural log of x plus 2 cubed minus the natural log of y to the 6th. So now, as I try to write it as one logarithm, yeah. will these end up in the numerator denominator? How about this one? So you have the natural log of x plus 1 cubed, x plus 2 cubed, over y to the 6th. Sometimes people write a natural log in the numerator and denominator wrong. Points off on the test. It is a single logarithm. Notice the directions even say single logarithm. We don't want multiple ones. We want one. We use this in calculus all the time. It's, it's super important. You seeing it now will make it easier than when you see it next year. All good? Yes. Thank you. So because it's negative, that's why it went to the denominator. Because the subtraction means we divide. Better? Okay. All right. Should we try something easier? Uh, third hour, I really like this. I think you guys are going to like this too. Log base 2 of the root of 32. Watch how I can use our operations in order to make things like these go more quickly. This is a common type of ACT question. We'll see how it works for you. This is the log base 2 of 32 raised to the 1 half power. What can I do with the 1 half? So all of a sudden you got 1 half log base 2 of 32. Would it be great if we could write 32 with a base of 2? Like is 32 2 to some power? Let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 2 to the 5th. So this is 1 half times log base 2 of 2 to the 5th. Yeah, cancels, right? Log, log base 2, and two, those go away? So you got 1 half times 5 is 5 halves. 1 half times 5 is 5 halves. Hold on, just to be clear, log base 2 of 2 to the 5th, that gives you 5. So this thing is 5 times 1 half. It's no longer an exponent. It is 5. I have subtraction. What can I do with subtraction? So I have log base 5 of... 100 divided by 4, which is 25. Wouldn't it be great if I could write 25 as a base of 5? Good. Log base 5 of 5 squared. Leaving you with 2. Good. Yeah, I 
I, I don't, it, it just, last year was different. I can't remember for sure where she got here. I know that she taught you how to change things from exponents to or exponential to logarithmic and logarithmic to exponential. I can't remember. I could go down and talk to her, but I just can't remember. That's all right. Okay, what do you want to do here? Four log base three of 27. Uh, Tim says that he could change 27 to a base of three. 27 is 3 to what power? So I have 4 log base 3 of 3 cubed. Those cancel, leaving me with 4 times 3, which is 12. Doesn't letter D look impossible? No. What can I do with that 3? Natural log of five cubed. I could move the three. Oh, you can't move the three out front there. You got to move it up on a logarithm. So now what happens? Yeah, the e and the natural logarithm cancel, leaving with five cubed, which is one twenty-five. Very good. <laughs> it's it's this five to the third. So remember, if you have the natural log of 5 to the 3rd, you can bring the 3 out there. Just as, just like if you have 3 natural log of 5, you can bring the 3 up there. Oh, uh, it says E right there. Okay, last one. Take out your calculator. This is the easiest part of the day. Easiest part of the day. Promise. Yep. Okay, um, look at what we have. It says log base 6 of 14. That's a problem. We want to find that exact value. Now, here's what that means. If you say log base 6 of 14, uh, what it means is this. Is 6 to what power is equal to 14? Well, I know 6 to the 0 is 1. I know 6 to the 1 is 6. I know 6 to the 2 is 36. So I got to be between 1 and 2, right? So if I try, like, say, 6 raised to the 1.5, I get, well, that's actually kind of close. So we'll try 6 to the 1.4. Whoop, 6 raised to the 1.4. Eh, not so much. How about 6 raised to the um, 1.46? Uh, well, I'm getting closer, right? Would you agree that would take a long time? Yeah. Let's find a better way. There's a formula that we can use. It's pretty straightforward. Here's the difference. Notice the base is 6. What do you think the base is for log on your calculator? 10. What do you think the base is for natural log? E. Here's what you do. You do log of 14 divided by log of 6. Notice my new base is 10. I have a button for log base 10 on my calculator, don't you? So I've got log of 14, and I divide it by log of 6. And I get 1.473. Go to three decimal places on these, please. Now, I want to show you something interesting. If you pressed natural log of 14 divided by, divided by the natural log of 6, you're going to get the same thing. You just have to make sure you use the same key. So, how would I do the next one? So log of 2 divided by log of 7. Oh, totally messed up with my parentheses, didn't I? It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, 0.356. The next one says 14 to what power is 1,652. I have no idea. But fortunately, I know how to figure it out really easily. I do log of 1,652, and I divide it by the log of 14, and I get 2.808, and that's that. Good job today. Uh, we kind of didn't do just a ton yesterday. We had to get through this today, okay?
please uh, try to get started. You've got about six minutes. You could definitely crank out a few problems that will help solidify your learning. I'll try to get these posted online tonight for answer keys so you can see what the heck we're doing.